So we got a simple shop catch-up video this week. Trying to get caught up on all the things that I'd put off or got behind on in the last few weeks. Trying to really get this shop to a point to where it's completely functional and I can use all my machines and you know, start making some chips. So that was the plan this week. It's just nose down, do all the little things, and I figured I'll share them with you. So hopefully you enjoy it. So over a year ago I took this apart and I am so glad I labeled everything. Makes it quick. Because this uh, this machine does have a wiring diagram with it, but I'd rather not have to dig into it if I don't have to. So I'm over here at the welding bench making some brackets to hang my cabinets with. I'm going to put uh, three above the welding bench here. And I ran across this while cleaning up this area over here, and I thought I'd show it because I don't think that I ever did. I think it was sent to me during the construction of this building. There's been a lot going on. It's been hectic, and uh, I apologize if I've missed anything. Or even emails that people send. I try to keep up, but I can't keep up with everything. So just had to forgive me. Hello Steve from Central East Central Illinois. I was tinkering around the shop the other day and needed an adjustable wrench. I opened I opened my toolbox where all my adjustable wrenches live and there was this one on top. For whatever reason, you and your furry friends came to mind so I decided uh, you needed to be the new owner of this wrench. It is a Squirrel brand, which I have a huge version of this uh, and it's really cool. You know, it's kind of funny when I when I pick it up. I wish this was US made, but I admit it does, to be, does appear to be a uh, decent quality. Uh, anyways, just thought you'd get a kick out of this. Again, keep up the good work. I really enjoy your videos. David S. Lynn. 
So thank you, David. I appreciate that. Sorry for the probably eight month delay. Let me see. Oh, there's your mom. Hey. Oh, he's washing his. He's washing his face. A squirrel. He's gotten so big. They grow so fast. It's crazy. So check that out. Two more cabinets up on the wall. I've got two more out outside that I need to bring in and hang, but these two in one day is plenty for me. These are kind of a pain in the butt to hang. You got to make the bracket and get them up there. Just not the easiest easiest job but man they're worth the effort all that space was unutilized before it was just wall space and now it can be used for storage just like the grinders in here that were sitting on the workbench you had to scoot them out of the way when you had to do something now they're right there still convenient to grab but not in your way so that's nice real nice So it looks like the coolant pump that I've been using for the last couple of years, pretty neat little mag drive centrifugal, must have frozen broke over the winter. That's unfortunate. But I do have another pump here. Hopefully it will work. Never used it. It was in my junk pile. Let's uh, put some fittings on it and try it out. We got to clean it up first. So down inside the outlet of this pump, a wasp decided to build a nest, a dirt dauber. 
packed plum full of mud. Take it apart, get a look at it. Stainless. Didn't feel very good. a bug in there of some sort. Okay. So this is a brushed motor, so ACDC. So pretty heavy duty little uh, little motor, kind of stiff though. I don't know. We'll see. It's Eastern uh, Pulse Feeder, Rochester, New York. It is 115 volts, single phase, 6,000 RPM, one fifth horsepower, 60 hertz, uh, 2.6 amps. Racing Wisconsin on the tag. So it's an old one. On off switch on the cord. Let's plug it in and see if it even turns. What the heck is going on? Oh wow, yeah, it runs. Got a crack in it. Typical for a plastic housing with an NPT fitting, a tapered pipe fitting, to be over torqued by somebody and cracked. Thought it felt like it was going pretty easy. So I'm not gonna tighten that any tighter than it needs to be to not leak, hopefully. That's what them cheap brushes are good for. Falling apart. Good enough. Let's try it. So, it's my fault that that one broke. I hate to see it go, actually. It uh, was really good and quiet. 
had a decent output. Uh, of course it's leaking. Uh, we'll see if it works anyway. Maybe I can uh, goop that up enough to make it not leak. All right, let's turn her on and then we'll turn the valve on. Oh, definitely doing something. Oh yeah. We can make that stop leaking. Got plenty of flow. Excellent. Kind of. So it is a little loud, but the grinder itself is not all that quiet, so it shouldn't make much difference. Having coolant on a grinder is a big deal. In through here, through the table, out, down into this reservoir, down into the into the return. Had to fix that leak. So let me show you what just arrived in the mail. Man, I'm excited to use this thing. It is my Teradyne 2000 spray welding kit that I sent off to uh, Eutectic uh, probably few weeks ago I'm guessing and uh, just got it back they did a uh, they did a thorough check over to make sure that this torch is in you know, good operating condition so huge thanks to Dave and Bestwick over there uh, for the support they said this torch looks like it's had maybe two pounds of powder run through it and it was in perfect working condition really needed nothing so I can't wait to, to actually use this thing it sprays out a metal powder just kind of like oxygen and acetylene welding, except for where it sprays a powder and builds up a surface. You can use this in conjunction with the lathe to build up worn bearing journals and stuff. Let me show you the extras that he sent. This is all I had. Obviously more to this uh, than just what's in this box in order to use it. So let me show you what else they sent along. So in the small box that they sent was the manifold kit to hook two acetylene bottles together. They recommend with this torch that you run two acetylene bottles um, because you draw so much fuel out of those acetylene tanks. If you just had one, you're at risk of drawing acetone out into the lines, through your flow meter, into the torch, damaging your O-rings and stuff, causing you all kinds of problems and potentially messing up the job that you're doing. So they recommend you run two acetylene bottles. In an acetylene bottle is a matrix in acetone where the acetylene fuel is dissolved in. I believe that's how it works. And if you pull too much too fast, it doesn't come out of the acetone and you're at risk of pulling it into your line. So this is just to avoid that. So I'm going to have to look into getting me another uh, fuel or acetylene tank uh, before I try to run that thing. He also, Dave also sent me a flow meter. This is a used one. They're quite expensive if you buy these new. It's both a oxygen and fuel flow meter, so you can dial in the proper flow rates for that to get good performance out of your torch. So I appreciate that. And uh, we'll have to make a, a holder and stuff for this to go on our, uh, on our torch rig. So definitely appreciate it. Um, all I need to do is pick up some powders now and look into getting me another tank. So... Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Eutectic Castalloy. Definitely appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, and Dave is the guy to talk to, he will definitely enlighten you on the world of spray welding. It's pretty neat. So thank you, guys. So if you watched last week's video, you'll probably remember this carburetor for this for a zero-turn mower that I got out and sitting in front of the shop. It's actually been out there for two weeks, and uh, it's time for me to get started on this thing and get it finished. I'm not the biggest fan of working on small engines anytime. Well, for a lot of people, if you do something for a living, even if it was in the past, 
it's not something you want to do in your free time. I'm doing this for a favor, or as a favor. But I've put it off long enough, so I gotta get this thing finished. Goodness. It's amazing what an impact will do. There's an old saying that probably a lot of you have heard, and that is that the cobbler has no shoes, or the mechanic's car is the one that's always broke down. That's pretty true. So this carburetor has a fuel shutoff valve. It keeps them from backfiring and stuff and feeding fuel into the engine um, after you turn the key off when the ignition stops firing. And uh, I've seen cases where these go bad. The engine just won't start at all, right? They're uh, a little electric solenoids, all it is. And you can see if they're working or at least to get a good idea if it's working or not by holding your hand on it turning the key on and you'll feel it click. You'll feel the action of the solenoid. I've seen those go bad before and cause people all kinds of problems trying to figure out what's wrong with them. So this carburetor is off of a 25 horsepower two-cylinder Kawasaki engine, and it did run. It just run poorly, really rough, uh, would barely idle. Uh, it missed at high RPM, just typical carburetor issues. And there wasn't anything glaringly wrong with this carburetor other than it had a buildup of varnish from old bad fuel that, uh, that needed cleaned off. Every screw, every small hole... You know, I just traced it down, cleaned it out, and put it back together. I couldn't find the spout to my carburetor cleaner can, so I had to use a Q-tip. It worked. Get off there. That one good. Wow. It's so hard to see. That's the spring. It's for the little fuel shut off solenoid. So I cleaned the carburetor on this thing. When it was brought to me, I was told that Bent push rods, missing like crazy, won't run, and uh, you know, I pulled the valve covers off and had a look because I believe they had that issue once before. So they went ahead and actually bought all the parts to fix it if that was the case. But I got to looking at it, checked the valve clearance, spun the spun the push rods, and everything was fine. Opened up the gas uh, <laughs> the gas tanks. It's got two, and. Uh, immediately could tell that it didn't smell good and uh you know the carburetor was completely gooped up so off with the tanks now this carburetor's back on 
because it would be a shame to uh, pour this stuff right back into the carburetor that I just cleaned. So these tanks are pretty big and we're at uh, where it picks up fuel from the tanks, you, you still have a lower spot in the tank where water and dirt and stuff, I guess, can collect. So really to pull these things, to clean these proper, they gotta be pulled off and washed out. Otherwise you never get all the crap out of them. Oh, wow. She's full of it. All kinds of crap down there. Right there is where it uh, comes out into the line, but I don't know what the other stuff is. Just parts of somebody's gas jug. Almost smells like diesel. So I've said it before, I've worked on mowers for quite some time, and uh, it's almost always fuel related, customer induced. Dirty gas jugs. People leave their gas jugs sitting out in the rain, out in the weather, and like me in the back of pickup trucks. They get full of schmoo, and they wonder why they don't run. I have made some wasps very angry. Oh, gotcha. These wasps flying around making me nervous. see down in there. That's part of somebody's blue jeans. How that got in there, I'm not for sure. Along with lots of dirt and grass. fixed. Well, we shut up. She can't shut up. So I wouldn't consider myself all that good at running a grinder. It's not something that I have a lot of past experience doing and plus this grinder was one of the newest machines added to the shop before I started tearing it down so I don't have all that much time on one. But the first job on this grinder is for my dad, so he has an old Makita 12 inch wood planer and the knives on it were extremely dull and he asked me if I would sharpen them probably a month ago. And at least once every week he's been reminding me that I have these knives of his that need sharpened. So that was, a, that was one of the things that pushed me to get my grinders back up and going so soon. So first job is for my dad.
So the setup on these knives was pretty straightforward. There was only one angle, I'm just mimicking what the original grind was on this blade, and it's a simple 45 degree. Simple 45 degree held on a mini pallet on an adjustable angle plate that's magged down to the mag chuck. The mini pallet happens to be held on by some welding clamps, but that doesn't make any difference. It actually worked out extremely well. So those turned out really nice. They were pretty worn, but there's still quite a bit of life left in them. Um, and they're extremely sharp. My dad should be happy with those. I mean, maybe not as sharp as a samurai could get them, but sharp as they need to be to cut wood and your fingers if you're not careful. Let's talk about the setup that I used to grind those. Now you could have ground that 45 degrees into the wheel and uh, probably just put them on the edge of the mag chuck. What I chose to use is some of the tooling that I recently got. This adjustable angle plate, really nice heavy cast iron angle plate with a ledge was a gift from Joel and Tessa, the couple that were here from Colorado a few weeks back. So that was really nice. And all I did was put that on the mag chuck, dial in the ledge, and then I took this mini, this mini pallet, it's an aluminum CNC mini pallet that was a gift also from probably six months back. I just figured it, I'd wait till I got opportunity to use it to show it. Uh, this is from Dayton CNC products. I used the quarter 20 low profile set. It's American made, really nice hold down hardware. Got the little uh, ledges for that hold down hardware. Also, it's drilled all over for dowels for situations just like I did, setting the blade on or, or whatever, where I just used the heads of the, the screws because that was more that was accurate enough for what I needed on those blades. But anyway, that was from Norman Miguel, Dayton CNC Products, LLC. And that is 4840 Neptune Lane, Huber Heights, Ohio. So if you're interested in one of these, it's nice, man. I'm glad I have it. So thank you. Thank you, Norman. I appreciate that. And thank you, Joel and Tessa. So the goal that I set for myself last week was within the next two weeks was to be able to use all my machines and be at the point that I was before the teardown and rebuild of this building started. And I actually exceeded that. I'm at that point now. So cutter grinder I can use, surface grinder I can use. I got my k &T cleaned back up and can use it. Got cabinets on the wall, still like two cabinets uh, to being done with those. Got some of my other cabinets cleaned out, which was just a side job. And I actually even got that mower fixed this week. So I hustled. It was a lot of late nights is what it was. It cleaned or sharpened those blades for my dad. He'll be happy about that. And uh, that's pretty much it. You know, got a lot of, got the coolant system uh, working on the uh, surface grinder, leveled my k and I was hustling this week. So that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the catch-up video because that's pretty much all it was, was me trying to bust my tail to get back where I was. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers, anybody who's supported me on this project. Starting to look good in here. So, still a ways off, but close. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. So